Okay, ngayon naman pag-usapan natin yung tungkol sa power. Kasi nga, itong uh, chapter nito ay pinamagatang work, energy, and power. Uh, napag-usapan na natin yung work and energy. Uh, kakibat niyan ay yung tinatawag na power. Ano nga ba yung power? Power is the rate of doing work or transferring heat. Sa thermodynamics, mapag-aaralan natin yan. Heat transfer is also a process of uh, generating power. Okay. Or the amount of energy transfer or converted per unit time. Sa SI units natin, ang unit ng power is watt. Yung watt, 1 watt daw ay equal to 1 joule per second. So sa formula kasi, ang power is work over time. Kagaya nga ng definition, power is the rate of uh, rate of doing work. Okay. So, work per unit time. So, kung ang work natin ay newton meter or joules, at ang time natin ay second, ang tawag daw doon sa unit na mangyayari ay watts. Okay. Yung daw watts, kapag tinibayad mo sa 1,000, ay di kilowatts ang tawag doon. Ngayon, sa imperial units naman, ang power ay put pound per second. Meron din tayong tinatawag na horsepower. Is equal to 550 put pound per second. O yung sikat na sikat na conversion natin na 1 horsepower is equal to 746 watts. Pag-aralan nga natin yung mga units na uh, tingnan natin dito sa kanan. Kung ito yung power P, is equal to work over time ay eh yung work natin kilogram meter per second squared multiply natin sa meter kaya naging newton meter yon divide pa natin sa second so naging joule per second siya yan daw joule per second na to ang tawag daw dyan ay watts ngayon kung, pasi, kung ating uh, bubusisiin at kakalikutin ng gusto yan Ang, pinaugat, ang pinakaugat niya ay kilogram meter squared divided by uh, second cube. Ngayon, uh, paano ba natin na uh, mas lalong titingnan itong uh, power? Ano? Ang power is the rate of doing more. Gaano mo kabilis uh, tinatrabaho? Sa, ibang, sa, isang, ba, sa isang salita, efficacy. May kaugnayan din ito sa efficacy, ano? So, for example, mayroong dalawang bata rito. Uh, they are mowing the loan. May isang batang lalaki at may isang batang babae dito sa sa kanan. Yung nasa kaliwa naman, yung batang babae. Okay. So, Pagpalagay natin na magkasing laki yung isang, isang loan yung kanilang imomo, kasing laki ng area, at itong uh, mga makina nila ay magkasing lakas lamang. Ano? Ngayon, uh, itong batang lalaki, nagawa niya yung uh, trabaho. Let's say, for example, nagawa niya yung trabaho within... 2 hours okay for the boy for the boy ngayon eto namang babae nagawa niya yung trabaho na 3 hours okay for the girl to finish the job no so it took 2 hours for the boy to finish the job and it took 3 hours for this girl to finish the same job. Ngayon, ang trabaho, ang work na ginawa nila is the same. Parehas lang ng trabaho ang ginawa nila. Pero mas may power itong batang lalaki sapagkat mas 
maiksing panahon niya, mas maiksing panahon niya natapos yung trabaho kaysa dito sa babae. Kasi kung isipin mo nga naman, power is equal to work over time. Pansinin mo sa equation na to, kapag ka itong time na to, maliit, lalaki yung lalaki yung numerator o lalaki yung power. Kapag lumalaki yung time, liliit yung liliit yung uh, dinam, uh, numerator, liliit din yung power. So, uh, time is inversely proportional to power. Kaya, kahit sabihin natin parehong nilang tinrabaho or pareho ng amount ng trabaho yung ginawa nila pero mas uh, powerful etong batang lalaki kasi mas maaga niyang natapos yung trabaho. The same way kung mas maaga natapos ng batang babae yung trabaho mas powerful siya kaysa dito. So may kaugnayan sa IP kasi ano uh, kapag ka ikaw trabaho ka ng trabaho at wala ka rin naman natatapos eh, parang wala ka rin, uh, wala rin power, wala rin uh, saysay yung uh, ginagawa mo, ano. So, meron tayong mga naobserbahan. Minsan, kahit sa kapaligiran natin, meron tayong mga kaupisinang akala mo, tatambay-tambay lang. Maya-maya, tapos na niya yung trabaho niya. Meron namang sub-sub na sub-sub sa trabaho. Wala namang natatapos. So, yun yung uh, tinatawag na efficacy, no? Power. Ngayon, uh, pagka pinag-usapan tong horsepower, uh, hindi natin ma maiaalis yung sa mga aircon, ano? Actually, yung mga aircon na yan, uh, maraming debate dyan. Ano ba mas maganda ang aking ilalagay? Uh, one horsepower o one half horsepower. Actually, din sa power na yan, the power topic nito, dito ninyo malilinawan, ano, on an engineering point of view. Medyo may pagka-actual na rin ito. Uh, sharing, ano. Unang-una, yan palang aircon na yan, huwag daw po natin ilalagay sa part ba ng kwarto. Lagi daw natin ilalagay sa parting itaas ng kwarto sapagkat uh, ang ipoproduce ng aircon na ito ay malamig na hangin at ang malamig na hangin ay mas uh, denser or mas mabigat kesa sa mainit na hangin. Ngayon, kung ang malamig na hangin ay bumubuga sa taas at mabigat siya by virtue of uh, gravity, bababa siya. No? Bababa yung malamig na hangin at mapapalamig niya ang buong kwarto. Pero imagine mo kung itong aircon na to nakalagay sa parting ibaba. Okay? Sa parting baba lang nakalagay. Ang mapapalamig niya, itong level lang na to, okay? bawa, dito mo nilagay. Oh. Ang mapapalamig niya, yan lang level niya, dahil mabigat yung hangin na inilalabas niya, wala naman tendency Uh, lumipad yung pataas. Lahat ng tendency pa baba. So, halos doon lang sa level na to, lalamig doon sa kwarto. Otherwise, kung ilalagay mo yan sa taas, okay, kunwari ito yung taas ng kwarto, pag buga niyan, yung mga may init na hangin na to, makukompress pa baba. Okay, at pag nakompress pa baba yan, lalamig na yung ating kwarto. Nevertheless, uh, segue yun, ano? Uh, pero, uh, kapakipakinabang yun, P16 po yun. Uh, the denser the air, the uh, heavier it is, and uh, kailangan nasa taas po yung mas denser air para bumaba siya kaysa dun sa lighter air. Ang nasa taas, hindi na po siya bababa. Anyway, let's get back to horsepower. Ano ba ang mas effect, uh, efficient? Yung one half horsepower or yung one horsepower? Diyan maraming pagtatalo at pag uh, 
pag uh, tatagisan ng kanya-kanyang opinion, ang may sasagot ko lamang po ay depende sa laki ng inyong uh, kwarto. Kung ang inyong kwarto ay uh, let us say 10 square meters to uh, say 15 square meters, eh kaya na po yun ng uh, one half horsepower na tinatawag natin. Ngayon, kung ang inyo naman kwarto ay uh, 20 square meters pataas, mga 20 to 25, dapat 1 horsepower yung inyong ilalagay. Bakit? Kasi nga, may, may kaugnayan itong power na to, no? The rate of doing work. Kapag nilagyan mo ang isang uh, kwarto na 20 square meters ng one half horsepower lamang, mas matagal yung oras na mas matagal yung oras na kukonsumuhin niya bago niya mapalamig yung yung kwarto. Ibig sabihin, under ng under yung compressor mo, hindi pa siya nag-automatic kasi mga isang oras na, dalawang oras na, hindi pa rin lumalamig yung kwarto ay pa paano kung nadadagdaga ng heat load tapos sa uh, labas-pasok pa yung ating mga yung mga kwarto edi lalo nang hindi siya makakaipon ng lamig hindi mag-automatic lalo lang lalaki ang konsumo sa kuryente so hindi palibasat hindi palibasat mas maliit yung horsepower mas tipid sa kuryente uh, ito po ay dinidesign ng mga mechanical engineers yung mga marurunong sa heating, ventilating yung mga HVAC natin ano? uh, alam nila yan yan yung kanilang mga yan yung kanilang mga expertise anyways as a person na nakakasalamuha rin yan at maraming buildings na rin po tayong nagawa uh, ang average niya na uh, easily kapag ka 10 square meters to 15 square meters di media lang kaya na wag mo naman din lalagyan ng uh, wag mo din lalagyan ng 1 horsepower yung mga 15 square meters bakit malakas ka rin sa malakas ka rin sa oriente although malamig na malamig siya uh, malamig ka agad yung uh, kwarto pero uh, malaki naman yung uh, malaki naman yung enerhiyang kakailangan niya para paandarin yung para paandarin yung 1 horsepower eh hindi rin economical para naman sa konsumo ng kuryente. So may tamang sukat ano, may tamang sukat. Uh, dahil nandito na rin po tayo sa power, yan yung isang sa magandang uh, halimbawa ng uh, power at efficiency, efficacy na tinatawag. So, hindi palibas at maliit yung makina ay mas uh, matipid siya sa oriente. Eh, hindi na rin naman ang tandaan ninyo yung power, the rate of doing work. Eh, di bali nang mas malaki yung makina, kung mabilis niya naman mapapalamig, mabilis na go-automatic yung thermostat, eh, di mas tipid pa yun sa oriente kaysa yung pa mag-net na yung umandar. So, yan yung ano natin, ano, yan yung, yan yung mga um, take natin dyan sa power. Uh, Na-example lang natin itong ating uh, uh, air conditioning units pero may segue din yan sa nangyayari sa actual at wag na wag kayo magpapakabit ng aircon lalo na sa mga building wag kayo magpapakabit ng aircon sa parting baba sa taas na sa taas tayo ng uh, uh, bahagi ng uh, kwarto natin ilalagay dapat yan so isa pa uh, power paano ba natin ito ipapaliwanag yung uh, mga yung mga ano natin yung mga Xerox machine yung mga Xerox machine natin meron yang tinatawag na ah uh, tawag dito 
meron tayong tinatawag na rate ng paggawa ng work nila no uh, or yung efficiency nila uh, papers per minute yata ppm no meron diyan na uh, sinasabi nilang ganun uh, 80 papers per minute ayan mga malalakas na mga makina na yan, no? meron din naman mga 40 paper per minute so, mas mabilis natatrabaho ng 80 paper per minute yung mga paramihang Xerox kesa dun sa 40 paper per minute. At kapag ka talagang marami ka ng isin Xerox, hindi mo rin naman po pwedeng, uh, hindi mo po pwedeng pwersehin yung 40 paper per minute kasi uh, baka mag-overheat yun dahil uh, sa tagal ng operasyon. Pero kapag ka, halimbawa, 80 paper per minute ka or 120 paper per minute ka, baka konting oras lang, tapos na yung trabaho. So, in short, dapat uh, the right tools for the right job or uh, right uh, power rating for the uh, right job. Yung power rating na pag-uusapan natin pagdating natin dun sa aspeto ng power kasi may power na aspeto energy ano ito nga yon may power naman ang aspeto electricity uh, pagdating natin dun sa tinatawag natin na uh, electricity and magnetism yon pag-uusapan natin yung power is equal to IB at uh, ibang aspeto rin po yun ano so, uh, sige, ituloy na natin tong power. P is equal to work over time. So, meron po akong uh, ginawa na rito dahil mabagal na yung mouse. Ayaw kong magpa, magpabagal-bagal yung mouse habang ako nag uh, na narrate. So, eto po. Kung mapapansin ninyo, P is equal to the change in work over the change in time. Or kapag kakalkulus po ang pag-uusapan natin, it is the der derivative of work with respect to time, dW over dt. Yan daw po yung power. Itawid natin dito, pwede naman natin pagbukuren d dt times work. Ito yung work binukod natin dito. Okay. Ngayon, uh, ibukod pa natin nga. Uh, yung work daw is equal to force times displacement. Yung S, ginawa kong S yung displacement natin kasi baka ma malito dito sa D over DT. No? Force times displacement. So, ito yung kinalabasan. Pwede rin natin sabihin force ds over dt pero ano ba tong ds over dt to? Alam na alam natin na yan ds over dt yan ay velocity. So kapag ka may mga problems tayo na given ng velocity at given ng force, pwede mo nang i-direct substitute. Ang problema kasi kung hindi mo alam ito, may hirapan ka pang magpa magpaikot-ikot dito, ano? So, tandaan mo lang, yung force times the velocity, power din yon, Yung change in work over time, power yon, Okay? So, yan yung mga formula. Ngayon yung P dyan ay power, W is work, T is time. Seconds to, uh, work is joules, at ito naman in watts. Okay? Watts po lalabas yung... Uh, ating joules per second. Okay. So what? When do we need to integrate? Ito yung mga tanong eh. Mga, mga tanong nandiyan ng mga estudyante dahil medyo allergic sa integral. Oh. Ang sagot lang ni Sir R squared, uh, when work requires us. Okay. Uh, kapag ka nire-require ng work, mag-integrate tayo, doon lang tayo mag-integrate. Otherwise, dito sa power, Ano lang to direct substitution lang karamihan to kung uh, 
matapos mong makuwenta yung work, pagkatapos sa given naman yung time, eh di double yung over ti lang. No? Pero yung work na yan, na-derive na, na rin naman natin yung uh, formula ng work in a uh, uh, tawag dito doon sa kinematics no? yung kinetic energy dinipine natin dinirive natin using kinematics right now, i-derive natin baka kasi matalisod nyo sa pag uh, sa pag susolve nyo ng problem mga ilangan ng uh, integral calculus So, ipakita natin ang roots niyan para alam na alam na ninyo ano, pag, uh, pag uh, i-integrate ninyo. Yung work daw is equal to fx dx from an initial to a final position because uh, this is with respect to x. No? Ngayon, kapag ka daw work net ang tinatanong, eh di f net. Eh ano ba yung F net na yan? F net dx dapat. Yung F net, sabi ni Newton, is equal to MA. Eh ano ba yung e? A na yan? Yung A na yan is derivative of uh, velocity with respect to time or dbdt. Multiplied by dx. Inilabas natin yung M na yon sa integral sign kasi constant siya. Ngayon, kapag ka kinross multiply natin, labas tayo dito dx over dt times db. Okay? At ano ba itong dx over dt to? E di ba yan ay b? Kung b yan from x1 to xf magiging b db. So pwede na tayo mag-integrate ngayon. Ito po yung pwede nating magamit na formula sa work. M e, times the integral of B dB. Ayan, isang napaka-importante yung formula po niyan. Ako po pwede niyong magamit. Uh, from an initial velocity to a final velocity. Ngayon yung M na yan, ilalabas natin. Tapos, ang integral nito, B squared over 2. Pag isinubstitute natin or pinlog in natin yung upper limit minus lower limit, mbf squared over 2 minus mbi squared over 2 eh anong tawag dito? Ang tawag dyan ay change in kinetic energy. Kaya nga po tayo may sinasabi na work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So yan ha. Dinerive na natin siya using integral before dinerive natin siya using kinematic equations. Nevertheless, uh, pareho lang yan. Kaya lang, ito po yung take natin dito. Minsan, given yung mass, given yung velocity equation. If the velocity equation is given, you can integrate that with respect to B. And then, you just plug in the initial and the final velocity. You will arrive at the same answer for work. So, yan po yung ating mga take dyan, ano? Alright, without any further ado, let us uh, solve problems in work, energy, and power. Number one, you're riding a toboggan down an icy run to a frozen lake. And you accelerate the 80 kilogram combination of you and the toboggan from 1 meter per second to 2 meter per second in 2 seconds. How much power does that require? Ang gagawin ko po dito ay uh, since uh, OBE po tayo, outcome based learning, ipopos ko po itong video and then you try to solve it yourself and then I'll be back to uh, discuss it after. Or hindi ko dito i hindi ko dito i sasama sa bidyong ito ang solution dun sa next video ko na lang isasama para mas mapwersa kayong mag-solve ng sa inyong mga sarili kasi kapag idudoktong ko dito iintay nyo lang yung solution so 
I will just be giving problems now and then you try to solve it yourself. Outcome based learning po tayo ngayon. Okay, we have number two. Yung number two po natin, ang ating uh, tanong is, a 1,000 kilogram car accelerates from 88 meter per second to 100 meter per second in 30 seconds. How much power does that require? Ayan, uh, nandito muna tayo sa mga simpleng tanong. Ano? Uh, almost direct substitution muna. Try to... Uh, Solve it yourself, and I will be solving this next video. Okay, we have number three. A 60 kilogram person is running and accelerates from 5 meter per second to 7 meter per second in 2 seconds. How much power does that require? So, sa mga simple lang muna tayo, no? Una, ito energy, power, uh, direct substitution lang muna tayo na para masanay. Number 4, a 120 kilogram line break buffer accelerates from 5 meter per second to 10 meter per second in 1 second. How much power does that require? O, yan. So, Initial velocity, final velocity. So, okay. Tapos, given yung, uh, given yung mass. So, malamang energy, uh, work and energy relationship ang gagamitin dito. So, yan. May hint na po kayo, no? And the number five, you're driving a snowmobile that accelerates from 10 meter per second to 20 meter per second over a time interval of 10 seconds. If you and the snowmobile together has a mass of 500 kilograms, how much power is used? So, dito, parang pare-parehas lang, no? So, tandaan nyo lang yung mga equations na mga na-derive natin during work, power, and energy. At huwag yung kalilimutan na yung change in the uh, Kinetic energy is equal to work. O yan. At yung kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Siyempre, huwag yung kakalimutan niya. O yan yung kinetic energy. Yan, malaking bagay yung may tutulong niyan dito. Ngayon, yung power, pag tinanong ko ng power, work over time. So, these are the working equations pa lang muna dito sa limang problems na to. Okay, let me erase these problems and let me have another batch of problems. Medyo ibang, ano naman, ibang level naman at ibang aspeto. No? Let me pause the video for a while. Okay, next problem is two P6 students, Juan and Pedro are in the weightlifting room. One lifts the 100 pound barbell over his head 10 times in one minute. Pedro lifts 100 pound barbell over his head 10 times in 10 seconds. Which two student does the most work? Pakisagutan po dito at ipaliwanag then which student delivers the most power? Pakisagutan din sa blanco at ipaliwan. Okay? Just to test your understanding about work. Let me pause the video and we will uh, have another question. So here's another comprehension question. During a physics lab, Jack and Jill run up a hill. Jack is twice as massive, mas mabigat, massive, as Jill. Yet, Jill ascends the same distance in half the time. Who did the most work? Sino ang mas maraming tinarabaho? At sino ang mas malakas kaysa sa kanilang dalawa? Power is lakas or the transfer of energy. Explain your answers. 
Here's another question. A tired squirrel, mass of approximately 1 kilogram, does push-ups by applying a force to elevate its center of mass by 5 cm in order to do a mere 0.5 joule of work. If the tired squirrel does all this work in 2 seconds, then determine its power. So you pause the video and solve it yourselves. yourselves. Here's another question. When doing a chin up, a physics student lifts her uh, 42 kilogram body a distance of 25 meters, 0.25 meters in two seconds. What is the power delivered by the student's bicep? Yung chin up para nagbabarbel siya, no? Or nagbabaras. So try to solve this also yourselves. Okay, here's another uh, another problem. Your household's monthly electric bill is often expressed in kilowatt hours. One kilowatt hour is the amount of energy delivered by the flow of one kilowatt of electricity for one hour. So kilowatt hour is a unit of energy. No? Use conversion factor to show how many joules of energy you get when you buy one kilowatt hour of electricity. Ayan. Pumapasok na tayo sa mga aspeto ng mga unitan, ano? Dito na, mga papasok talaga yung understanding natin sa work. Pakunat na ng pakunat yung mga problems na yan. Kaya, dapat by this time, yung siyam ng mga problems na sinolve natin, eh, alam na, alam na natin, ano? Okay, here's another question. Question number 10. An escalator is used to move 20 passengers every minute from the first floor of the department store to the second. Period. The second floor is located 5.2 meters above the first floor. The average passenger's mass is 54.9 kilograms. Determine the power requirement of the escalator in order to move this number of passengers in this amount of time. So, may is, is, meron do escalator, no? Yung escalator, iba sa elevator, no? Siyempre, escalator yung parang ganito. Ayan, escalator, alright. Ngayon, yung escalator na yan, Eh, may dalawang pong tao daw, no? It will move 20 passengers every minute from the first floor to the second floor. Kunwari, ito yung first floor. Ito naman ngayon yung second floor. Ayan, parang sunstar lang. Ayan, ganyan. Okay. Ang tinatanong, Yung power, determine the power requirement of the escalator in order to move the number of passengers in this amount of time. And ano raw yung power na kinakailangan para mag-akyat ng mga tao, no? So, isolve po natin yan. Here's problem number uh, 11. Rene is out with his friends dapat to no his friends rene o baka naman babae yung rene so let us try to uh, modify this modify this problem rene is out with his friends misfortune of course when the car you will run out and Rene and his friends, his dapat ito, no? His friends find themselves getting a workout to push the car 
they apply a cumulative force. Cumulative, pinagsama-samang puwersa ng mga magkakaibigan. Of 1080 newtons to push the car 280 meters to the nearest fuel station. Determine the work done on the car. So, uh, kindly solve this and we will solve this next video. Hans Poole is pulling on a rope to drag his backpack to school. I think this is already a uh, problem number 13, if I'm not mistaken. 13 or 12, something like that. Let us suppose this is 12. He pulls upward and right towards to the force of 22.9 newtons at an angle of 35 degrees above the horizontal to drag his backpack on horizontal distance of 129 meters to the right. Okay, may, be, may given na distance, may given na direction, given din yung force, given din yung angle theta. So, kayo na po ang bahala kung paano natin isosolve yan. No? Geometric form of work. Pwede mo rin gamitin dyan yung Caltech. Okay. Okay, I guess this is problem number 13 already. Sheila has just arrived at the airport and is dragging her suitcase to the luggage check-in desk. She pulls on the strap with the force of 190 Newton at an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal to displace it 45 meters to the desk. Ah, masyadong malaki itong desk na to 45 meters. So, mga isang kanto to, no? Determine the work done by Sheila on the suitcase. So, masyado yatang malaki. Anyway, ito yung binibigay ng problem. Although this might not be realistically uh, correct, but this is the uh, what is given in the book. We can solve. Uh, kasi given naman yung force, given yung angle, taka lang ako 45 meters. Displacement, 45 meters. Isang kanto, des lang. No? Anyways, uh, let us try to solve it. Okay, during the powerhouse lab, Jerome runs up the stairs. Elevating his 102.102 kilogram body on a vertical distance of 2.29 meters in a time of 1.32 seconds at constant speed. Okay, yan yung mga bigayan dyan, eh, no? yung mga constant, constant speed na yan. May mga ibig sabihin din yan. No? This is at constant speed, the mass of the body is 102. And the vertical distance, maybe this is a vertical displacement, is 2.29 in a time of 1.32 seconds. So determine the work done by Jerome in climbing that stairs. And let her be determine the power generated. So power, no? Kapag nakuha mo yung work, divide mo na lang sa power. Madali pa rin po, mga kaibigan. Okay, problem number 15. Yeah. A new conveyor system at the local packaging plant will utilize a motor-powered mechanical arm to exert an average force of um, 890 newton to push large crates at a distance of 12 meters in 22 seconds. Determine the power output required by such required of such a motor. So given tayo na force, natural kaila ibigay na yung force. Tapos given tayo na distance at may time. Oh, hindi pa problema natin dito. Walang problem yata rito. Hanap tayo ng medyo mahirap-hirap ng konti. 
ganyan lang po lagi ang problem tungkol sa power. Uh, Nag-i-integrate lang talaga tayo sa work eh. Pero hanap tayo na medyo may konting may rap -rap. The Taipei 101 in Taiwan is a 1,667 foot tall 101 story skyscraper. The skyscraper is the home of the world's fastest elevator. The elevators transport visitors from the ground floor to the observation deck on the 89th floor at speeds up to 16.8 meter per second. Determine the work done by the elevator and the power delivered by the motor to lift the 10 passengers at this speed. The combined mass of the passengers and the cab cabin is 1250 kilograms. Neglect the weight of the elevator and the uh, and all the energy lost due to frictions in the cord and the pulley. Meaning to say, yung cabin lang ang i-consider natin, pero yung weight mismo ng elevator and the pulley or the weight of the uh, ropes and the pulley will not be considered. Uh, talaga pong tunay nga po itong mabibilis po talaga ang mga elevator sa Taiwan. Misan po ay nakasa kayo sa mga isa sa mga elevator dyan eh. Within 5 seconds, nasa 16th floor na po kami. No? So, uh, ang tinatanong dito, uh, determine the work. Ito, 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 ito. Determine the work done by the elevator and ano pa? Tinatanong ay yung power delivered by the motor to lift the 10 passengers at this speed. Okay? Medyo... Madali pa rin naman. Uh, kailangan mo lang ng konting uh, conversion pero kaya pa rin. So, I hope you you will solve this and then we will be having our solution next, next time. Grab some more. Okay, pang 16 na yata, pang number. The ski slopes at Bluebird Mountain makes use of tow ropes to transport, transport snowboarders and skiers to the summit of the hill. One of the tow ropes is powered by a 22 kilowatt motor, okay? Uh, be, uh, be mindful of this. This is in kilowatt, no? So... That is not in watts, which pulls skiers along an icy inclined of 14 degrees, given yung inclined, ano? at a constant speed. Suppose that is suppose that 18 skiers with an average mass of 48 kilograms hold onto the rope, and suppose that the motor operates at full power, determine the cumulative weight of all the skiers. Oh, madali lang to. Determine the force required to push, to pull this amount of weight up to 14 degrees in time at a constant speed. Okay. Um, alam ko may pangatlo pa to. Teka ha. Let us pause. Okay, let us see. Determine the speed at which the skiers will ascend. Okay, ano raw yung velocity? Yan ang mabigat dyan na yung velocity. What is the speed at which the skiers will ascend? So, meron daw ice. Kung narin may ice, ano? It's making a 14 degrees with the horizontal. Ice yan. Tapos may rope. Kung narin yung rope is making an angle of 14 degrees then with the horizontal. Yan. And then may labing walong tao rito na mga naka... Okay. Suppose that 80 scares an average. Hold on to the rope. 
Yan, labing walang tao. At meron ditong motor, ano? May motor dyan na hihila sa kanila at ang angle of 14 degrees. This is 14 degrees with the horizontal. So, paano ba natin isosolve yan, ano? Determine the force required. Ah, ito. Ang uh, uh, gagamitan nyo na ito ng, ano, ng rotational axis. Tapos, gagamitan nyo ito ng konting uh, resolution of vectors. Isasama mo dyan yung work bago mo isasama yung quantum conversion. Tapos, sasama mo na rin yung uh, power. Yan. But anyways, madali pa rin. Dito lang sa velocity, ay gagamitin mo na lang dyan yung FB siguro. FB is equal to P. Okay? So, ang dali. Kung alam mo tong FB nito, ano? Anyways, that's the hint. Huwag ka lang magpaikot-ikot pa. Ito lang yan. Power is equal to FB. Kaya nga, dinerive natin yan kanina para hindi na rin kayo mahirapan. No? So, so, here is our last question. Ano? For power, uh, work energy and power. Over and above dun sa mga nauna nating uh, uh, problems. All in all, mga 25 problems siguro ang ibigay natin. Pati dun sa mga integration. Ano? A bicycle, ito naman, ito naman last problem na to will uh, challenge your comprehension. A bicycle has a kinetic energy of 124 joules. What kinetic energy would the bicycle have if it had letter A twice the mass and was moving at the same speed. Letter B, the same mass and was moving with the twice the speed. Letter C, one half of the mass and was moving with twice the speed. Letter D, the same mass and was moving with one half the speed. And letter E, three times the mass and was moving with one half the speed. Okay, try to solve these problems and uh, do it religiously within yourselves. You can have your books, you can have the internet, and uh, try solving it. I-reference nyo na lang yung, uh, yung mga lectures natin. Hindi naman to lalayo lahat doon, lahat na ibigay na natin. And then write your answers. Next video, uh, tomorrow I will be uh, making another video showing the computations of all of this. Good luck and God bless sa ating lahat.